like this lot of redstone? This? A redstone computer? How on earth did I do something like this? Well, you find out very soon! What's up guys, Eddie 67716 here, and welcome back to another redstone video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you all the basics on how I managed to build a redstone computer. So this is going to be very complex, it's going to be very confusing, but it will also be very epic. Alright, let's get right into it. Now before we get into anything about computers, we have to understand all about binary, which is what everyone knows are zeros and ones. But what is binary? Well, this is going to be the basics of binary. See, binary is a base 2 system. Now, for example, we humans have a base 10 system, so we have 10 digits all the way from 0 to 9. But binary is what happens when you limit it to only 2 digits. So the way you count will be 0, 1, 10, 11, 100, 101, 110, 111, etc. So that's how we have to represent like, have, represent numbers and everything in electricity. Everything in digital technologies is represented by just zeros and ones in sequential order. So how does that work electronically? Well, it means that if it's off, it means it's zero. But if it's on, it means it's one. But it might be a bit different in actual electronics, but this is how it works in Minecraft and Redstone stuff. So how does that work? Well, this next thing will show you. Each line is called a bit. The more bits you have, the more numbers you can represent. Take this nibble, which is four bits. Each line will represent a number, but the number doubles each line, further left starting from one. So like, we start off here, this is one, and then it's two, this is four, and this is eight. But how does that represent every number from, like, like through that group? So, one thing that works with binary is each one will double what it can do. So this will allow it to be 0 and 1, so that's two different combinations. This will double that to 4, 0, 1, 2, 3. Then this will be 0 to 7, then plus this no, will be 0 to 15. So that's 16 different combinations. So like, when everything is off, that is 0. But if I turn this on, it means it's 1. But I can't do anything more to this, so we go to this one and make it 2. And like that. Then when you want to add, make it 3, you turn this on. But now you've run out of bits again, so now for bit 4, you use this. Then bit 5 will be this, then bit 6 will be like this, and then bit 7 will be like this. So this can represent every number from 0 to 7. But now once we get up here, we turn bit number 8 on, and then you turn this on, it represents 9, then this can represent 10. So it's all mathematical, so like 8 plus 2 is 10, 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11, and then well, it's everything like this. So this can represent any number from 0 to 15, which in hexadecimal values, that's 0 to f. Like A, B, C, D, E, F means like 11 to 15. Or was it? No, no, it was 10 to 15. <laughs> Forgive me on that. And so like if I want to represent the number 12, I would have to turn on... 8 and 4, since 8 plus 4 is 12. If I want to represent the number 11, I'd have to turn on 8 plus 10, which is 10 plus 1. So this can represent every number. Now the next few signs say that this symbol can represent every number from 0 to 15, or in hexadecimal, that's 0 to f. And then, when you have one byte of binary lines, now one byte means 8 bits, and it can represent every number from 0 to 255. So, if I want to represent the number 100, the best way to do it is to head backwards and subtract. So, num so if it can fill the number, or overflow it, but not be less than the number, you turn that bit on. So, 100 is not greater or equal to 128. Well, 100 is greater than 64, so that turns on. So, 100 subtract 54, I think that would be about 36, I think. I'll just double check that maths. And I believe 36 will, like, overflow 32, so that get bit turns on. Then 36 take 2 is 4, so that will mean this is on. So that should be the number 100, but I'll just double check. Okay, I just did the math, so that works out. Now let's see if we can try it with another number. What about 135? So 135 is greater than 128, so that bit is on. And then, I'll just have to do all this maths quickly. 
Okay, the remainder is 7, so that basically means the first three bits all turn on, since like 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. So 128 plus 7 should be 135. So this could represent every single number from 0 to 255, so that's 256 different combinations. And then if you want more, you can just add more bits, but usually like computers in real life are limited to a number that's a multiple of 8, like, and, well, double numbers, actually, like, 8, 16, 32, 64 bit. Although we've had no need to go up to 128 bit architectures as of yet. So as you can see by this sign, each extra line will double the amount of representable numbers. So if I add a ninth bit, that means it can do 512 different combos from 0 to 511. Now we need to go on to bit manipulation. Like, this is how like, you do all our logic stuff, like, make sure bits are true, make sure bits are equal or, like, greater, and all that sort of stuff. Now, this is all done using logic gates. Now, I've done logic gates in my tutorial on redstone torches, so I'll give you a link in the description to how that is done. Now, binary can be manipulated using logic gates like and gates, or gates, not gates, or gates, and and gates, and or gates, or gates, or is this, you know, no wait, the or is going to be, okay, that's weird, and gates, like, not, zor, and nor, or zor, these all have different outcomes. Now, for one example, this is the and gate, which will only be true if both bits are on, so if, you can see here that if it's zero, it's zero, if it's 1 plus 0, it's still 0. If it's 0 plus 1, it's still 0. But if it's 1 plus 1, it is 1. So there are a lot of other gates which are in that link I'll have in the description. And if I don't put that link in, <laughs> feel free to throw an anvil on my head. <laughs> okay, now if you chain a ZOR gate and an AND gate, you can do single bit addition. So this is what's known in practice as a half adder. Now, you can only see a ZOR gate, that's because ZOR gates, these two blocks will only be powered if both bits are on. So it does the exact same combination as an AND gate. So that means I can just run it off from the side to get an AND thing. So it's only on if both inputs are on. So that means if bit 1 is on, 1 comes out. If the other bit is on 1, it's still 1. But if both bits are on, that is 2. Now this is only good for like 2 bit addition, so you can only do like 0, 1 and 2. But this is a full adder. Now if you want to add a carry line and another half adder, you end up with the full adder. Now the carry lines are what you use to link a bunch of these full adders together for multiple bits, which I'll show you a little later. But what this does is if this line is on, it's 1. If this line is on 1, it's also on 1. But if this line is also on 1, that is 1 plus 1 is 2, so that means the carry will be out, so that's as if bit 2 is on, but if I turn the carry on, now it's outputting 2, so that is actually 3 in binary coming out, so yeah, that's how you represent it with a full adder, but now what this means is here I've got a very simple 4-bit adder, which means it can do addition with numbers all the way up to 15, so let's see, I've got input A on, and uh, what's, okay, what's this on? Okay, that's 8 plus 4 plus 2. 8 plus 4 plus 2. Wait, no, have I written this the wrong way? No, this is meant to be 1 plus 2 plus... Okay, so that's 3. And then the input B is, that's 0 plus 2 plus 4. That's 6 plus 3, and 6 plus 3 should be 9. And that's bit 1, and that's bit 8, bit 1 plus 8 is 9, so yeah, that's 9. So yeah, you can do a lot of other little combinations with that. Say, for example, I turn this all off. If I do 1 plus 3, that should be 4. And that's bit number 4 on. If I do... If I do... Now, here's an interesting thing. If I do, um... If I do 15 plus 1... That will run what's known as an integer overflow. So if I turn this bit on, you can see that this carry line is on. That means there's an overflow area and the number was too big to handle because this cannot handle 16. Same for like I turn on more. If it's ever too big for the whole thing to handle, it would output there and like not be able to get the whole number. It's called integer overflow, at least in coding it is. So I assume it would be in 
the same here, but yeah, so that's how four bits can be used to build an adder. Now, these signs say what you can also do. Inverting the input B and turning carry on can do a subtractor, and adders are the basis behind what's known as an arithmetic logic unit, but ALUs can perform other logical operations like and, or, or, not, nan, nor, and so on, even maybe like bit shifts and subtracting. Now I'm going to show you an ALU later on, but now I'm going to show you some other things of binary. Binary encoding. Now to encode into binary, you got to use a, a waffle line like this. So say I want to turn like 1 on, this puts out 1. If I turn on 2, it will put out 2, and if I turn on number 3, it puts out 3. Now this uses like a NOT gate system, so these all have to be turned on. So you've got to use a NOT gate here, which by the way is another logic gate, and it's needing our time better sleep. So we will often use this type of array to like encode binary. Say for example, you could use a red coder that inputs a signal strength from like 1 to 15, and then that can be converted into a nibble of data, which is like 4 bits. And this can also be used for read-only memory, for like CPU operations and stuff like that. Can also use an array like this. So like this is how you actually get data encoded into binary. Use a machine like this. Now, what does this sign say? Yeah, connecting this to a single string decoder can make an analog to digital converter. So like that's taking an analog single string and converting it into a nibble of digital data, which is similar to how we do in real life. We take the voltage and amperage of like circuitry and then like we convert it into digital stuff something like that but it's a lot different now the binary decoder will do the opposite of a binary encoder so say i input zero none of these bits are on if i input a one number one is on if i input two the middle one will be on and if i input three the last one will be on now this uses torch logic control so like when you want the bit to be a bit that's on, you just will need one torch here, but if you want it to be a bit that's only on if off, you need two torches here. So the way this works is, if both torches at the top are off, that line will be off, which means the output will be on, because it has to be knotted as well. So you can run an encoder into a decoder for like stuff such as like turning on different parts of an arithmetic logic unit. So that's how you encode. Now how do you store it as memory? We use what's known as random access memory, which means it will be randomly accessed and stored. It's used for temporary storage, although a design like this can also be used for permanent storage in Minecraft. So this is one byte, no, one bit of memory. You can chain this redstone like multiple times to make like eight a byte of memory. Usually we do them in groups of bytes for memory. So this is the input line. So say I want to save a one in. So you have to press this line that says set and it will set the cell. This uses some redstone logic which the set will allow a current through into here. Then it will power this piston. Then this repeater will store it because once this is on it will bud power this piston, and then the memory can be outputted. Now, sometimes in memory, you just need a set. Say, like, a single byte of memory in an area of a, an ALU or a CPU, you can do that. But, but in normal cases, you also need enable, because enable is what actually allows you to load the memory out, and then it can be reused again. So, if I, like, edit this, you can see that does nothing to here, because the memory is saved into the system. So, like, nothing that happens here will do anything. But once I press enable, it is going to outload the memory, and now it can be rewritten to, but not until I repress set. Which now, it's actually set a zero into the memory, and when I read enable, it's output a zero. So this is how we actually save data. So these are all the basics you really need to know about binary. Now it's time for me to show you how to actually do stuff like the computer. This is going to be real technical if you thought this was bad, it gets worse. This circuit here takes in everything I've told you, like there it has RAM with just set, here it has RAM with enable, that's a part we'll use later called the double dabble unit. It's how we convert a analog, you know, a digital system back into a 
analog one that can run, well, one that can run a seven segment display, which I'll show you a bit later. But here we have the arithmetic logic unit. Now this here is an encoder, uh, like a decoder connected to an encoder. So the encoder will set the ALU, this is an arithmetic logic unit. In fact, you can see right here split in the middle, this is an adder. Now this door gate here is used for subtracting. When it's turned on, it will invert from this side, it will invert the input in from here, and it, this will also have to be turned on, because carry needs to be on for subtract. And then the other lines are used for like, like the AND output here can be sent out when this line is, when this line is disabled, which will turn that valve off, which will allow a circuit, th th a, a, like a signal through there. Like I use a lot of redstone valves in my circuitry, which I build using a comparator and a repeater. I show this in my comparator video, which you can also check the link in the description. But yeah. Also, if you want to know more on computers, I'm gonna link two videos from in one lesson on how computers do math and how a central processing unit works. This is gonna be really interesting. So now. This is like the array. This allows us to do s certain things like add, subtract, and the output, or the output, zor the output, not the output, and it, or nor it, or x and all. I haven't really done the one that compares the bits, but what it's meant to do is if all the bits are the same, it should output a one, which is used along the program. So I've got everything off here, which means it's set to add. So now this system can do simple addition. So if I want to do an addition, like say, say like the classic two plus two, I'll turn two on, this is input A, it needs two inputs. Now for input B, I'll turn two on, but this uses RAM to say, because like the bus, which that will connect to, will be a mains bus, which will always be on and off and stuff. So now what I have to do here is save it into memory. So now that saved a two in, this line will go through here, and you can see that this has gone into here. It goes through the outer circuit and will come out here as four. And then this line can be saved by pressing that. And then if I want to load it out into another area, I can press the enable button. And you can see that torch temporarily turned on. This will eventually be read, threaded into the double dabble unit, which is a very complex system where you have to bit shift bits every time, and then you have to like if they are, was it if they are greater than, was it if it's greater than I, you have to add three or something like that. It's very weird, and you got to bit shift and do the same thing over and over again, and that's how you get a seven segment display run off it. But now, I'll show you how to subtract. Now, if I turn bit, I believe this is bit one. Yeah, that, this seems to be the subtract line. And now, say if I want to subtract one from what? No, let's say I want to subtract one from one. So I turn that line on, then I press the enable button. So what this has done is now it's like it's in subtract mode and it's subtracted one from one to make zero. Okay, now let's see what happens if we cause an integer overflow exception. Well, underflow will probably be a more correct term. So let's see what happens if we subtract two from one. So if I press the, the set switch, we'll turn this on. This will now set through here. But now this will cause something known as the error circuit. So this is what goes off when there's an integer overflow. Yeah, pretty nifty, huh? But wait, what is that? What is that? April Fools!